You've said that that was I, a great career highlight. I'm sorry. Oh, it was a highlight. I played it last year in, in New Orleans with the, with the Louisiana Philharmonic for, I guess, a fundraiser for them. And, uh, and uh, it, it got a pretty good reaction also. <laughs> A couple of other musical highlights in your years with the Philharmonic? Well, uh, it, there have been so many uh, that uh, I, I wouldn't know where to begin. I, I, just uh, me personally uh, uh, recording some of these uh, wonderful uh, pieces that I did uh, uh, with the Philharmonic, uh, uh, solo pieces like Debussy Rhapsody and Nielsen Clarinet Concerto and, and uh, William Bolcom Concerto and, and of course the, the, the Corigliano, which is, I have two recordings. The, the live uh, premiere with Bernstein, which is in the box set of uh, historic broadcasts, and the, the proper studio recording three years later with Zubin Maida, and uh, I, I got my first Grammy nomination for that one. And, and the Copeland Concerto, which 10 years later, I got my second nomination in 19, 1992 uh, with Bernstein conducting the Philharmonic. It was his last recordings with the Philharmonic. In, in October of 1989, he, he conducted two weeks as a guest, uh, an all Tchaikovsky week and an all Copeland week. I was, I was his last soloist. And uh, I saw him one time after that, at Christmas 1989. I, I was part of the orchestra that went to Berlin to play the Beethoven Ninth Symphony, the so-called Freedom Concert, uh, when the wall was coming down. and. Uh, uh, I was one of the lucky people to be invited by him to, uh, to be in that orchestra. And uh, uh, that was uh, an amazing time, actually. Uh, to, they were knocking the wall down as we were rehearsing and playing, you know. And, and uh, that concert went all over the world uh, at 11 a.m. on Christmas morning in, in 1989. And uh, that was the last time I saw him. Incredible. Pierre Boulez, uh, on this video that is on the New York Philharmonic website, um, says that, first of all, Stanley is a lively player. <laughs> and, and Stanley, too, has talked about being an edge-of-seat performer. When you start playing a m music in a band, the director always tells you, be on the edge of your seat <laughs> just to have the energy. And Stanley has that all the time. Pierre Boulez has also said that, that um, Stanley Drucker is something beyond an icon. He said he's really a New York and a national monument. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing that, that, is, uh, that I believe Boulez says on this tape is that Stanley Drucker is one of those players who can change the course of a concert by his performance. And I hadn't thought of that before because it seems like such an ensemble piece. You're all tops all the time. But you're the man who can make the difference. Oh, I know. That's too much responsibility. <laughs> I, uh, but apparently it's, it's quite true. Um, Louis Patalano, who is a stagehand, also on this videotape, <laughs> says of Stanley Drucker, he hardly ever caused any problems. <laughs> <laughs> He's very important. <laughs> and, uh, and one of the other players in the Philharmonic says that for Stanley Drucker, nothing is a problem. And I think you can see from the way that he relates the tales of his life and career, that that has clearly been the case. Musically, there just hasn't been a problem. 